going the wrong way. Welcome to this launch of um, my brother as Darcy's Ireland, Ireland's Guantanamo granny, and we're delighted that she has uh, chosen to do it with us, and we think it's a very important book, and we're delighted to be the first people to, to, to bring it to Galway, and the first people to bring it anywhere, in fact. I haven't actually read it myself, uh, but my grand assures me that it is, and I uh, asked her what it's about, and she said, well, it's about, uh, it's about this uh, really nice, uh, dear old granny who um, likes to wear bright clothes and uh, has a quirky habit of asking awkward questions. So that's what it's about, I think. Isn't that right? I would say that sums it up, yeah. <laughs> that sums it up, yes. <laughs> no, I have read the book. It is just a pure inspiration. Um, as I say, I feel underqualified, um, but I know that it's all part of Margaret's great loose theatre. It reminds me of in the 19, early 1980s, being in Dawson in London um, when Margreta was going to Greenham Common and there was a lot of women around that time who were going to Greenham Common and there was also the women's press and there was a particularly strong feminist movement as feminist consciousness that was coming in around at that time um, it was really inspiring looking at the world in a different way um, and the book is beautiful I cried um, some people say that I would cry at anything. <laughs> and that may very well be true, but I don't know how to cry at anything. But it's lovely to see a book that holds that space wherein I feel a connection with, and that's what I do. It, it allows me to connect with humanity in a way that I'm not being permitted in the political circumstances of the moment, in that narrative that is given to us by our politicians, which is so unimaginative, so closed down, so oppressive, so without admission, without imagination and creativity, Margreta offers it another way, a particularly Margreta way. It should be a handbook for every act of retirement group in the country. It should be given this book. It should be sneaked into the, into the retirement homes and say, get up off your arse and do something. It should be given to young theatre performers to know that there are other forms of Theatre that is, they are not so perhaps self-indulgent. They do not hold the Abbey Theatre as the be-all and the end-all. Um, it's a revolutionary book, and for that I'm grateful. Thank yes, you. Thank you. you know, don't be frightened of having sons. <laughs> <laughs> when they grow up, they can be very useful. <laughs> and without, without, without my son Jake's help, this book would never have come into fruition because he edited, and then I have my other grumpy son, Finn. Well, smiling. <laughs> <He's> smiling. <laughs> and without him doing the very difficult task of having to do the press, and which is all in here, I've put his endurance down, if you're happy with that, Finn, are you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> of course, I haven't read the book. And I'm <laughs> And it's given me the opportunity to look through the book and I actually didn't realise how many very important thoughts are actually in the book. It should not be read from beginning to end. Instead, you want to open it up and find little gems because the book is not only about me, but there are many different voices in. And then, of course, we have the press because the press made a big difference. So you can actually follow the story um, with the press. And then, of course, we've got the uh, turgid prose of Darcy as she slugs along <laughs> the way to try and have the conversation with the state. So there's a, a quote from Pope Francis, September 2015. Why are deadly weapons being sold to those who plan to inflict untold suffering on individual and society. Sadly, the answer, as we all know, is simply for money. Money that is drenched in blood, often innocent blood. In the face of this shameful and culpable silence, it is our duty to confront the problems and to stop the arm trade. Now, it's funny, it's, you live in Galway, and Shannon, unless you're travelling to Shannon, one doesn't go. And at that time I didn't have a, a, a free pass, 
And so the idea of going to Shannon having a little I had no idea about what was happening in Shannon. Ashri then is that they published a booklet in 1996 which exposed Ireland's dirty little secret. Established for the first time links between a number of Irish companies and the international arms trade. Among the items detailed by AFRI as having been exported from Ireland were armoured vehicle technology, gun turret components, radar equipment and av uh, avionics. Avionics? Avionics. The report concluded the arms trade can be a dirty business. Ireland's hands must only be clean. They must be seen so. So being told about this, and living in Galway and thinking, oh, I'm a right on person, I know everything that's going on. Suddenly the revelation that this was happening 60 miles away really shocked me. Now this is a poem, and it's by somebody called Shaker Amar. I don't know who he is, but he's there in Guantanamo, having been snatched and deported through Shannon into the hellhole of Guantanamo. But I thought when I uh, was put in for three months, I, oh, I love a little I think I learned Irish, and I'll come out as an Irish speaker and whatever have you. <laughs> and so I brought my little dictionary in with me. And so I, I only actually translated one poem, and this is this. And this is thank you to Gabriel Rosen Doctor. I translated it from his Irish, and I don't know what the original language was. Here's his poem, Sheikha Amar. Fighting for the sake of peace. Peace, they say, spirit of peace, what kind of peace? Seems they all talk, argue, all at loggerheads. What kind of peace do they want? What planning? What causes the slaughter? What is the reason? It is not difficult to murder. Arguments lead to slaughter. They quarrel about peace. And I think that's a fantastic, absolutely fantastic poem. There's a lot of funny things in the book, like when I indicted the judge and decided to prosecute him. I mean, it's, it's a, a strange kind of book, because being a theatre person, naturally enough, I'm going to make full use of my theatricality wherever I am. <laughs> and of course, it's that the judge fully appreciated that. So when we talk about capitalism, we should also talk about imperialism, because at Shannon is our Irish army protect the US military against us. But shortly before going to jail, I visited my cousin Prim, who was a nursing home in the old Cabaret Road, and she mentioned that there were some letters that my father had written from jail. There is an ordinariness about these official letters. They are simply matter of fact. The draft of the letter from my grandmother to the authorities read, of my son Noel Darcy, on the 28th of February, 1923, a party of CID men searched my home, paying particular attention to the room occupied by my son. In it, they found a belt and a holster, which he had used as a member of the IRA and a broken <coughs> air pistol. The belt was taken away was a souvenir of his time in service with the IRA. It's only when the CID informed me that I or any member of my family was aware its possession was contrary to regulations. From November 1922, the free state government embarked on a policy of executing Republican prisoners in order to bring the war to an end. Many of those killed had previously been comrades during an Irish War of Independence of those who ordered their deaths in the Civil War. In addition, government troops sum summarily executed prisoners in the field on several occasions. The execution of prisoners left a lasting legacy of bitterness in Irish politics. The use of execution by the Irish civil rights in the Civil War was relatively harsh compared to the recent British record. So they go on about 1916, but does anyone go on about the amount of prisoners that the Irish Free State executed their own people? I mean, hundreds. And not only men, but also the condition of women inside Mountjoy was horrendous. He had been arrested when he was on his bicycle, and he left his bicycle behind, and he was worried about that. 
So what he wants is, he asks his mother, could one of my brothers go to 35 Dawson Street to get it? So that is really this kind of normality about the things. If you can find time, bring Jim, his younger brother, to the doctor. I was thinking about him just before my arrest. Tell Morgan he really is in control in the jail, telling his, uh, uh, telling his mother all the things that all the other children have got to do. She had nine children. Tell Morgan to bring back the books to the library. <coughs> Will someone go down to Ariel House, yourself if you're able, and Annie, and ask for Inspector Hughes, and ask for the 30 shillings which they have belonging to me. Because, of course, his wages kept the mother and the nine children in food. He's very bossy. Also summoned to go to the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Stephen Green, between Dawson Street and Kildare Street, and ask for the weak wages due to me, and includes, I enclose an authority which may do. I authorise Bearer to receive wages due to me for period up to the Wednesday, the 28th of February, 1923. I did not yet get the underclothes you sent. Was my bicycle got all right? Send in three Gillette safety razor blades. I hope all at home are still keeping well. As far as I'm concerned, I'm enjoying pretty good health. The only thing worrying us in here is the lack of smokes. <laughs> So a friend of mine, Esther, that we decided to um, do something for St. Bridget's Day. And we thought we'd go into Shannon, and we would, I think, what would we call the rambling rhymers. And we thought, people are in there, and they're waiting for their planes, and they get a bit bored. So why don't we go into the restaurant, and we sit down beside them, and we'll say, would you like to read a little poem for St. Bridget's Day. And they were absolutely delighted. I mean, uh, one or two said, um, we have to catch a plane, we're in a bit of a hurry. <laughs> Bridget is a patron saint of this land. Bridget decommissioned lethal weapons, challenging her father, exchanging his sword for the poor, life instead of death, peace instead of war. Had she seen Shannon Airport turned into Shannon Warport, she herself would have turned herself into a pillar of raging fire. Let me carry my tale to the horrors that lie here. Hear, hear, behind the veil, how many planes full of captive in chains? Where will they go? To the cages of Guantanamo? Will the government try to discover where and why are our war crimes on Irish ground to flourish and abound because those that we trusted to keep us safe and sound are quivering with fear of the great power over there? Do they care for the pain of the mothers of the prisoners transported east to west? Do they care? for the pain of the mothers of young soldiers transported west to east by hundreds and thousands to a criminal and useless war. What would Bridget have said? Had it entered her head? That this would be the destiny of the land where she lies dead. In war, it is said, all suffer defeat, even the victors. For evil to prevail, it is only necessary for the good to remain silent. No, and thank you for your support and everything. Well done. Thank you. So where's your father? I'm just putting the father anywhere. M A R. She spoke very well. She's a lot of energy for 82. Very interesting snip, snippets of stuff that she referred to as well, indeed. I like her choice of poetry. And I'm just waiting for a sign. I was standing about there, and that was taken. Trophies. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I want to see the money go through. <laughs> Much. It's easy to write a book, but it's editing the book, and that's what my son did. You're mighty, 
Really? You were, yeah. And I loved um, your comparison of what you said, yeah. Odella. Yeah. Odella. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> and how are you? You did a good job as being a mother as well as being an activist. Oh, thank you. There you are, Finn. He is saying I'm a good mother. <laughs> how many copies you sold so far? Any idea? Eight. Huh? 48. 48? That's not bad. Thank you.